in the UFL semifinals. It's news tonight. Welcome aboard. Thank you so much for tuning in. In our first story this evening, President Yuri Kaguta Museveni has received a special message this afternoon from his Central African Republic counterpart, His Excellency Faustin Achenjo uh, Todera. Uh, the special envoy, Cloud Remarks Bureau, who is both the Minister of National Defense and Army Reconstruction for Central African Republic, delivered the message to President Museveni this evening at State House in Debe. During the meeting, the special envoy conveyed warm greetings from the president of the central african republic to president museveni the government and the people of uganda they also discussed matters of mutual interest between uganda and they also discussed uh, during the meeting the special envoy conveyed warm greetings uh, to the president and the people of uganda and they also discussed matters of mutual interest between uganda and the central african republic are specifically focusing on defense cooperation and trade linkages the special envoy was also accompanied by the outgoing minister of defense and veterinary affairs honorable vincent sempija and the incoming minister honorable both max and jacob among other senior military officers and government officials The Ugandan security agencies have heightened vigilance of VIPs and sensitive installations amidst re-emergence of ADF terror threats within the country. The BIFTAF security based on the confirmed intelligence that ADF remnants entered Uganda with suspected intentions of targeting VIPs and critical government installations. Our reporter has more to this. The UPDF and other sister security agencies' intelligence confirmed the resurgence of ADF terrorists through the western border of Eastern Congo. This has fostered the enhancement of border patrols and stringent checks for those entering and exiting the country. Our joint security agencies of police, UPDF, are in coordination with the joint intelligence components of CMI, ISO, Crime Intelligence, are actively monitoring our external borderline with DRC uh, following the infiltration into the country of um, uh, a few notorious ADF uh, rebel leaders. The Police Directorate of Counterterrorism has revamped the services towards protecting VIPs and sensitive installations. The preliminary security intelligence indicates that these ADF remnants are targeting prominent people in government. In particular, we would like to uh, caution all our security personnel uh, to be very alert, and uh, including those who are manning VIP installations, uh, protecting politicians and uh, we want to warn uh, any of those persons who will be found harboring or collaborating with these uh, uh, remnants of ADF rebels to know that they will suffer uh, consequences. Intelligence teams have been initiated to counter any re-establishment of ADF cells in different communities. Uh, but we want to assure Ugandans that uh, like we've always done, we are doing everything within our means to locate these remnants of ADF who filtered into the country uh, with the objective of disrupting their mobility and uh, proliferation within the country. The memorable attacks of the ADF were made on the central police station where people lost lives and the other one was that of the twin bombing at Parliamentary Avenue. Meanwhile. Police registered four deaths in mines and quarries. These occurred in mines of Kasanda, Namutumba and Nachifuma, and all are attributed to illegal mining without safety precautions. There are no safeguards in form of rescue equipment, electricity, constant supply of oxygen, there are no lifeguards. The walls have fractures from blastings and uh, easily collapse when there is a vibration uh, or from weights. Uh, above. 
Police Minerals Protection Unit is instructed to reinforce existing mining laws and regulations to save the lives of miners. Patricia Nandago and Abdul Nasir Luwama for UBC. Recently appointed ministers of state have committed to serve after taking over from their predecessors. Balam Barugahara, who was appointed Minister of State for Youth and Children Affairs, committed to mobilize all the youth against poverty. This was shortly after he appeared before the Parliamentary Appointments Committee, chaired by the Speaker of Parliament, Anita Anita Mong. They were six in number, nominated to various state ministerial posts. They were to appear before the Parliamentary Appointments Committee for vetting. They have all turned up. Nominated Minister of State for Youth and Children Affairs, Balam Varugahara, arrived first. We don't have to skill people, everyone to do skilling of making bricks and the chapata and ETC. Each sub-region of Uganda has its core. Karamoja has minerals, so the youth of Karamoja should be skilled in mining. Bunyoro has oil, our youth in Bunyoro should do more of oil and gas. Then the youth in Uganda are good coffee farmers. So we need to do that, but for me to achieve that as a minister, I will reach out to the young people in their sub-regions, hear from them, and then in an incubator, they give proposals of what we need to do. He pledged to rally youth in the fight against poverty and mobilize youthful political opponents to come on board. One of my key immediate steps I have to take is to convince the head of state and the attorney general and the DPP to pardon all the NUP supporters, to drop all the charges on the NUP supporters, the NUP, NUP youth, so that those youth can be incorporated in society, be rehabilitated, be skilled, be funded so that they put energy on the development of a country other than burning streets and burning buildings. Lilian Abe and Fiona Nyamtoro nominated to the Disaster Preparedness and Energy Ministry dockets had similar pledges. I am one person who does not breathe conflict. If there is disagreement on principle, it will be handled. But one thing I can guarantee you is that I am not going into that ministry for any petty fight. I'm going there to perform my duties and to deliver services as assigned by my boss. So I think Uganda is good to go when it comes to petroleum. But also there are very many other minerals that we need to explore and see how best Ugandans as the citizens and stakeholders can benefit from the existence of these minerals. Florence Nambozo seemed ready to take on the Karamoja Affairs docket. The challenges in Karamoja that uh, have prevailed on for a long time. I don't stand in the place of God to say I'm the one going to remove them. But one thing that I know is that I must be having a healing ingredient in me. The reason I've been appointed to go to Karamoja. Outgoing Presidential Private Secretary, Dr. Kenneth Omona, also a firm's commitment to service. Ah, very interesting. I mean, some people I've, I've ever seen or known before, so, uh, well, nothing so new in Parliament here, I think. I've been here before. Do we see you come back to Parliament in the next election? No, I'm not going to present the next election. I'll be here in Parliament as an ex official. I'm not going to run for Parliament in 2006. The ministerial vetting exercise seems to have been successful with candidates waiting to take off. Henry Okrut, UBC. Efforts are underway by locals and marine authorities to recover the bodies of two women who drowned in Lake Bunyonyi in southwestern Uganda. The incident occurred on Sunday the 24th when their dugout canoe capsized amidst heavy rains accompanied by strong winds and hailstorms and the rough conditions also claiming the life of an infant whose body was floating on the lake. 
Lake Bunyonyi with an estimated depth of 900 meters, that is 3,000 feet, and 29 islands holds a significant place in Africa's lake systems. However, for many residents, relying on agriculture cross the waters daily to access their farmlands. But two women and an infant died last Sunday, March 24th, due to harsh weather conditions. The deceased have been identified as Naturinda Rachel, Kesande Lehonelia, and five-month-old baby. At the scene of the incident, Stephen Kabarebe recounted hearing cries for hope as it rained. He rushed and saw an overturning canoe. Attempts to rescue the victims were hindered by rough waters and Kabarebe could not save the victims. Chigezi sub-region police spokesperson Eli Mate acknowledged the incident and assured ongoing efforts by marine police and locals in the search operation. The chairman of the Murandi village, Elidad Kalanzi, confirmed that of the five individuals aboard the canoe to survive. Georgia Simwe, a concerned resident, appealed to the government for support in providing life jackets to families living around the lake. It is estimated by locals living around the lake that close to 40 people perish from this lake annually. The video showing the cut fingers of the deceased Susan Magara crying for help from her relative uh, to have her released by the kidnappers has been displayed in court. In the video, Susan Magara, who was eye masked and crying for help to be released by the kidnappers, uh, it was presented to court by Kanene Enoch, an expert in cyber and digital forensics. Judge Alex Ajiji of High Court Criminal Division is presiding over the murder case of Susan Magara, the case against eight suspects. The 18th prosecution witness was Kanen Enoch, a forensic expert and cyber analyst attached to the electorate of services at Nagru Police. Kanene told court that he got a requisition from Detective ASP Isaac Sembera to do forensic analysis on exhibits in Susan Magara's case. I do recognize them. They bear the lab number. This was the first exhibit as the unique identifier of every exhibit. The exhibits included phones for the deceased Susan Magara, her parents, and phones which were used by the kidnappers directing her father where to find her daughter Susan Magara. Kanene was also given a flash disk containing a video which showed a lady crying for help. <laughs> He later discovered that this was Susan Magara showing the two cut fingers. My lord, also this SD contained two images, some images. These were some of the images found on that image, on that memory card, and this image, my lord. Kanene showed court the photos of the alleged money in dollars, which was given to the kidnappers to have Susan Magara released. In interpret it was taken. They aligned the money, arranged the money on bed sheets. There are a number of images reflecting different money and different serial numbers. These images were also found to have been shared on WhatsApp to other numbers. The witness also disclosed to court the phone audio recordings between the parents and the kidnappers requesting for money and directing them to find their daughter Susan Magara. The call data showing the kidnappers communicating before, during and after the kidnap of Susan Magara was showed to court. This was the last call it made. It was in communication with a number registered in the names of Yusuf Mohindo. The call data also displayed the names in which the SIM cards were registered in, among others, Nagai Anet, Nambuya Rehema, Isaac Makubuya, and Kawoya John. When you look at this IV, this is the serial number of Susan's phone. And the next history that was captured, it was captured in a different phone. And it was inserted in this phone while at Namasuba. Susan Magala's number, SIM card, was still in this mobile phone 
and now it had changed the BTS, the location. Meanwhile, witness Shamira Nawasa, who arrested the accused Hajara Nakandi, also testified. Judge Alex Ajaj adjourned the case to 23rd April 2024 for further hearing. Deborah Nama Monde, UBC News. The leadership of Forum for Democratic Change Party in Najan Nkumbi continues to deny collaboration with the NRM party, saying this has been confirmed with last week's president's cabinet reshuffle, where none of their own was appointed for any position. During a weekly press briefing, the deputy secretary general of uh, the deputy secretary of publicity in charge of publications and communications, Molindo Walid Lubega, said that it is their considered opinion to have the number of cabinet ministers cut from 80 to 20. President Museveni came up with a list of cabinet ministers in which he made changes in different positions. Members of FDC at Najanankumbi have commented on the cabinet reshuffle where they cite the reappointment of some ministers who were implicated in corruption scandals, especially the Anshit Saga, who still hold public office. FDC says the cabinet reshuffle reaffirms that they do not have any cooperative agreement with NRM. I think that all individuals implicated in the iron sheet scandal should have first um, consequences. For example, relieving them from their cabinet positions. Furthermore, the cabinet reshuffle dispels the false narrative propagated by our colleagues at Katonga that the FDC leadership colluded with NRM. The absence of any appointed FDC official in the cabinet reaffirms that our party has no cooperation agreement or business with the NRM. The FDC in Najana Kumbi, who also participated in the just concluded Dokolo Woman Member of Parliament by election, say the results indicate that Dokolo is purely an opposition belt, but attribute their loss in the election to malicious propaganda against their candidates. The election was won on local propaganda. For example, our candidate was labeled as uh, somebody who had, uh, had no identity that she was coming from, uh, from uh, Kole. Kole is a district where her mother was buried. So that local propaganda actually worked on our can against our candidate. Meanwhile, as Muslims fast and Christians continue with Lent, FDC has asked all Ugandans to pray for an end to corruption and poverty in Uganda. I'm Navka Farida and Mike Bakablindi in Ajanankumbi. In a related development, Forum for Democratic Change, FDC, that's now the Katonga faction, has challenged the recent United Nations Human Rights Development Report for the year 2023-24, disputing Uganda's shift to a middle-income status, asserting that the country remains just one step away from achieving the status. Meanwhile, the FDC Katonga faction reiterates unwavering commitment to nationwide outreach programs following the decision by Kampala Metropolitan leaders to initiate the national program on Saturday, March uh, the 30th. Uh, the Secretary General of the Katonga FDC faction Harold Kaija provided the media at uh, their headquarters in Kampala with a detailed insight into the FDC f uh, comprehensive outreach program that is according to them in Katonga. ...category aligns with an exciting message that I got um, a few days ago. The UN Committee for Development Policy has announced that Uganda has now fulfilled the criteria for graduation from the least development country to the middle, lower middle income country category for the first time. 40% of Ugandans spend a month without earning a single shilling. 1% of the working class earn a million shilling and above. 1%. 67% of Ugandans are in the subsistence economy. Subsistence economy means you only work hand to mouth. You don't save anything, you don't earn anything. You, you are still working for what they call the Chida Chonka. 
if you went to the banks, people are defaulting on loans. You cannot tell us that we are going in an income, sorry, in a middle income status. This is a political statement made to appease Ugandans. President Wafe, Omrodi, Omrodi Wechibuga, Omrodi Wafe, Omrodi Wechibuga, We thank you so much for watching. Let's take a short break. Fred! Osmosis. Freddy, Freddy! <laughs> Fred Dola, my boss, CEO of Inojo, the general of generals, the conqueror of conquerors, the first and the final, the sky above the skies, the promised land, the terms and the conditions, the international king crocodile, the source of the source Osmosis. of the Nile. I don't have money today. <laughs> Just take a polite loan of 200 you get to stock on my shop. The signs and symptoms of success. The bank commander, not the bank tailor. Why hassle for a loan when you've got MTN Momo? We're so tingy. Use the Momo app or dial star 165 star 5 hash for all quick loans. Choose from the different loan options from our partners and get one that works for you. Together, we're unstoppable. Have you packed, packed? more it's Harbour Jelly? Irritations? No more rashes and irritations. Movit Herbal Jelly and Herbal Soap is rich in natural herbs for a smooth and glowing skin. Movit all day confidence. Hi, Fifi. How are you? I'm fine. Bobby. Eh? Whenever I eat chips and chicken, mm -hmm. I feel stomach ache, joint pain, and body weakness. My dear, go to MX Nutrition Center hey. and learn the best food for your body. Hmm. and get treatment according to your blood group. Are you sure? Yes. By the way, do you know your blood group, genotype, and how much you need to exercise? Come to Timex Nutrition Center for professional advice on how to manage your health and immune boosting. At Timex, we treat diseases like diabetes, arthritis, ulcers, obesity, pressure, and many more. For details, find us at our headquarters in Kampala on Nasa Road, Conrad Plaza, second floor. We also have a branch in Barara. Or call us on 0758 819952 or 0778 288361. Time Mix. Be your own doctor. Attention everyone, the Ministry of Health has planned to vaccinate all persons aged 1 year to 60 years old to protect them against yellow fever disease. The mass vaccination will take place in 53 districts in these regions. Kampala, Buganda, Teso, Ankole and Karamoja. Vaccination is free and available at all government health facilities and outreach posts in these regions. The vaccination campaign will take place from April 2nd to April 8th, 2024. The vaccine is safe, effective and free of charge and has been approved by World Health Organization and Ministry of Health. This message is from Ministry of Health with support from Gavi. Thank you so much for watching and welcome back from the break. It's UBC News tonight. Minister of Justice and Constitutional Affairs, Norbert Mao, has advised essential skills uh, for cultivating responsible citizens. He was at Namiliango College during the 122 years celebrations of the school. For 122 years, Namiliango College has provided a holistic education that has churned out many notable citizens. Some of the things we have done recently, the government is drumming up support to ensure that we, we give kids training. 
people have moved behind here, you must have seen students dressed in orange overalls. We have something called DIY, do it yourself. Parents pay some money and we train their boys in various things. During the day to celebrate the milestone, Prime Minister Robin Anabanja was represented by Minister of Justice and Constitutional Affairs Nobat Mao, who is one of those most pronounced old boys. As the Prime Minister of Uganda and leader of government business in Parliament, I wish to take this opportunity to thank you and on behalf of my boss, Savarwani Kabuta Yoweri Museveni, for this focus on science, because as you all know, without science and other great innovation, we cannot develop faster. Today's anniversary is a moment for us all to celebrate, but most importantly, reflect on the importance of quality and relevant education. Mao underscored the need of cultivating skills for responsible citizens to propel them into formidable agents in the nation-building process. It is important to invest in the human being because the nation's greatest wealth is its people. And the nation's greatest wealth is its youth, its young people like you. Because the future of any nation is built on the dreams of its young people. Namiliango College was founded in March 1902 by the Mill Hill Fathers, a London-based Catholic missionary society, and today stands as one of the oldest schools in the country. The African Research Universities Alliance has held a stakeholders and policy makers engagement meeting on disseminating, disseminating findings on the capacity building grant that focused on the shifting notions of motherhood and fatherhood for improved children's well-being. The African Research Universities Alliance Director, Professor Sarah Sali, says that this provides a platform for parenting and children well-being stakeholders to create synergies between different implementation institutions at the national and local levels. A strategic plan from 2024 to 2029, the Arua project seeks to position the center of excellency in notions of identity as a key contributor to the increased generation of new knowledge through research and innovation. The Center for Excellence, through its hub, Makere University, took on a research on the shifting notions of motherhood, where researchers and policy makers shared findings. Ask, I will not hear us define how this family is formed, the father, mother, and the children. Is it mutually? Is it out of conflict? Or it is out of coercion? The increasing number of single mothers, that is 100% correct. Motherhood, how, how is it uh, played? It's very, very important. In particular, we wanted to find out how is fatherhood and motherhood changing, why is it changing, and how do these changes impact on children's well-being. The African Research Universities Alliance Director, Professor Sarah Sally says, this provides a platform for parenting and children's well-being to create synergies between different implementation institutions at the national and local levels. So far, the parenting identities have changed over the years due to a number of factors, which include economic changes and wars. Single motherhood is increasing, and it's increasing because while the single fathers, while the fathers can walk away, mothers are a little bit stuck with the children. So economic changes, wars have actually been some of the primary drivers of this. The coordinator graduate programs College of Humanities and Social Sciences, Dr. Zaidi Sechito, emphasizes need for cultural reorientation to address the cultures in homes as well as make policies that support them. We need a cultural reorientation to challenge some of these cultures. Challenge some of these cultures. And uh, there are these cultures that are Western and these cultures that are indigenous. If we can do that, I think we can help to uh, improve parenting in the, the near future. Secondly, if we could also undertake policies that support uh, cognitive behavior therapies where people can be spoken to. 
Jane Nyuramchia, and Dan Lugemwa for UBC News. Kampala Metropolitan Police has recovered motor vehicle UG0053N belonging to the Ministry of ICT that was stolen at the climax of the Nana Line Movement Summit uh, that was held in January this year. Police has apprehended Mathias Musime, a driver attached to the Ministry of Health, as the prime suspect regarding this car robbery, uh, confirms Kampala Metropolitan Deputy Police Spokesperson Luko Yasijide. the NAM uh, G20, G77 plus China Forum, <coughs> uh, where we had a lot of delegates and uh, because a lot of delegates were expected within the country, uh, the government of Uganda pulled in vehicles uh, from different ministries to come and uh, help in the transportation of the visitors that we had in the country. <clears throat> now, after the successful uh, after the successful policing of the event and also the success of the event, uh, we registered uh, an incident of theft of one of the vehicles that was used uh, in uh, transportation of uh, the delegates. That is a uh, motor vehicle uh, registration number UG 0053N. Uh, that uh, was belonging to the Ministry of ICT but uh, had been attached in the movement of uh, the delegate. Now, uh, we realized that this vehicle had been stolen and uh, we embarked on the tracing of the said motor vehicle. We interrogated those that were responsible, that were responsible in safeguarding these vehicles where they were parked in Kololo. And uh, we managed uh, to arrest on the 21st, that is uh, Thursday, uh, last week, uh, in an operation we carried out and arrested Musimi Mathias, who is a driver attached to the Ministry of Health and uh, is said to have stolen that motor vehicle. So the motor vehicle uh, was recovered and I want to inform you that Mathias is uh, being charged with uh, theft of a motor vehicle. He will be arraigned in courts of law today uh, over allegations of theft of motor vehicle. That is one thing I wanted to inform you about. Uh, one of the very bad incidents we registered after the policing of uh, the Namji 77 plus China uh, activities we had in the country. <coughs> The Uganda Development Corporation is being urged to quickly explore expanding the Soroti Fruit Factory beyond its present output capacity of 120 uh, MD. State Minister in charge of economic monitoring, Beatrice Akello, stated that the presidential directive given earlier this month must be implemented. She was speaking during an on-site inspection of the Soroti Best Farm whose primary source of input is oranges and mangoes grown by the local farmers in the area. The Soroti fruit business can only meet current demand for processed juices if it rapidly grows its production capacity above the present 120 metric tons per day. Beatrice Akello, the state minister in charge of economic monitoring, emphasizes that in addition to the market demand, Increasing sustainable farmer production is vital. We found that the factory is in full operation, though the capacity cannot buy all the fruits produced within the region. They only have the capacity to buy 10% of the fruit being produced in this sub-region. And therefore, last time the president directed that there must be expansion of this fruit factory so that its capacity is elevated to the extent that it can buy all the fruit being produced in this. Soroti Fruit Factory intends that in completing the commercial sense of its business, local top processors of beverages in the country are being engaged to explore improved purchase of fruit pulp from Soroti against imports. In this particular case in Soroti, um, most of the concentrate that the packaging companies use 
actually they import from other countries, India, China and so on. We are now saying no, we have enough fruits in Uganda. We can supply you concentrate. And as I speak now, Britannia, uh, Harris International uh, are off taking our concentrate and uh, pulp for mango. And uh, Coca-Cola has also done an audit, a systems audit. So every time they will also start off loading. The Minister for Economic Monitoring also advises the Soroti Fruit Factory to fulfill the processes of its international production and market requirements as soon as possible. Also advise them to do a lot in terms of marketing and also to follow the procedure to get certification for international markets so that uh, at least they boost the economic activities of this area because this area is known for fruit growing. So if they cannot buy fruit from these members, we cannot uh, reduce poverty. The Uganda Development Corporation UDC, on behalf of the government, is the major investor in the Soroti Fruit Plant. Along with the Teso Fruit Farmers Cooperative Union, the investment is worth 100 billion shillings. Party members who contested for different political positions in Wakiso district in the 2021 general elections but were defeated want to meet the party chairman, uh, Yuri Kaguta Museveni. They told the media in Nansana and presented a letter addressed to the chairperson office of the national uh, chairman, Hajat Hadija Namialo, to remind the president about the promises he made to meet them. The 2021 general elections left many of the ruling national resistance movement members in shock after many candidates were defeated. So NRM party members in Wakiso district launched a campaign to mobilize the support. <laughs> The disgruntled party members in Wakiso district further sought appointment of the party's chairperson to meet them, to which he promised, but this hasn't yet. We have always wanted and uh, looked for the president to have a discussion with him on issues that affect us and our members. We are over 1,200 members uh, who stood for electoral positions on NIM ticket. We have been looking for the president. He promised us on 16th September that we will see us through our DC. Till now, over seven months, we are still waiting. Our issues, to tell him, as for the bailers who have sold the district, why we failed the elections? Why we failed? Why people are very sad. The team led by Wakiso District Chairperson Moses Mayanja has reminded the party's chairperson his promise to meet them through a letter addressed to the office of the national chairperson Hajat Hadija Namialo. We have written several letters to the Secretariat, to the State House, and there are DC. We have not had any response. Now we are here with this document. This document we are taking to <coughs> Chambogo, ONC office to Hajat Namiao, the, uh, the national mobilizer, and Chief Muzukuru, to present the membership that has uh, been crying all along to seek appointment with the president. It was since September at Kololo last year, the president himself promised to meet us. As I said earlier, it is over seven months now. Seven months, our colleagues are, complete, are impatient and they have been patient enough to seek for his meeting. One, most of our members lost the positions. And these members who have responsibilities from those that elected them and also from the family uh, responsibilities. Some of them invested a lot in the uh, campaigns, but not that we want him to give us money, but we want him to support us. You know, when he supports us, we will be able again to mobilize more for NRM. They later headed to the office of the national chairman in Chambogo to hand over their letter to Hajat Namialo. Uh, some of our members have already reached Chambogo. We are on our way now. After this <coughs> press conference, we are going to throw them up. I'm Ivan Juko for UBC. <laughs>
Fred! Osmosis. Freddy, Freddy! <laughs> Fred Dola, my boss, CEO of Inojo, the general of generals, the conqueror of conquerors, the first and the final, the sky above the skies, the promised land, the terms and the conditions, the international king crocodile, the source of the source Osmosis. of the Nile. I don't have money today. <laughs> Just a copyright loan of 200 you to stock my shop. The signs and symptoms of success. The bank commander, not the bank tailor. Why hassle for a loan when you've got MTN Momo? We're so tingy. Use the Momo app or dial star 165 star 5 hash for all quick loans. Choose from the different loan options from our partners and get one that works for you. Together, we're unstoppable. The government of Uganda and the Uganda Bureau of Statistics is calling upon all stakeholders such as the chief administrative officers, city mayors, resident city commissioners, city clerks, city and division councillors, wards and LC chairpersons as well as the residents and business communities to cooperate with the UBOS field teams as we embark on advanced preparations to conduct the national population and housing census on the 10th of May 2024. The census will be at 10-day exercise to obtain statistical data and information that will be used for planning and policy formulation including information on 1. How many we are 2. Where we are 3. How we are living 4. What we own and 5. Where we access services from. The Uganda Bureau of Statistics has now started listing of households and mapping in the 11 cities of Arua, Fort Porto, Gulu, Hoima, Jinja, Lira, Mbale, Masaka, Mbarara, Soroti, and in the Greater Kampala comprising of Kampala, Wakiso, and Mukono districts. For more information, please call 0755-342-128 or 0773-342-128. This message is brought to you by the Executive Director and Census Commissioner, Uganda Bureau of Statistics. Census 2024. It matters to be counted. TB kills approximately 30 people daily. And 247 Ugandans fall ill of TB disease every day. TB has killed dreams and families. We all deserve a chance in life to hustle, smile. We all deserve a chance to dream and be the best version of ourselves. It is preventable and curable. Know your status. TB testing, treatment, and all TB-related services are free in all government hospitals and accredited private health centers. Are you planning or in the process of traveling abroad for work? Using irregular channels to find and travel for work abroad often seems cheaper and faster, but you risk being trafficked, mistreated, or forced to do work you did not agree to. Using proper channels is safer, offers more protection, and better access to support services when problems arise. Do not be deceived. Choose the proper channels. Always verify all information before traveling abroad for work by contacting the Ministry of Gender, Labor and Social Development, your local district labor office or DSOS office. You can also visit EEMIS website on eemis.mglsd.go.ug. This message is brought to you by the International Labor Organization with support from the Government of Switzerland. I'm Kaylee with the Very Special Weather Report. From up there to down here, everything is crazy. If we don't listen to scientists, things are going to be even crazier when I grow up. Let's look at the forecast for 2050. Heat waves will affect 94% of children, making playing outside a thing of the past. Extreme droughts will wipe out wheat crops, killing the one food my brother eats, bread. Disasters will cost taxpayers almost $6 trillion. My parents hate taxes. Of course, all of this is caused by a blanket of heat-trapping pollution in the atmosphere that we could just, like, not put up there. But don't worry, there's still a chance of clear skies. 
Right now, clean energy systems are moving in from the east to the west, creating tons of coal jobs. And solar prices have dropped lower than oil and gas. Going to the satellite, it looks like a high-pressure system of grown-ups could still move in and protect kids from an avalanche of really bad stuff. Some gusty political winds ahead, but they're no match for the power of Hurricane Felicia. That's my mom. We'll keep you posted as we track if adults stop wasting time and fix this totally solvable problem. Because it's not just a weather report to us. It's our future. TB kills approximately 30 people daily and 247 Ugandans fall ill of TB disease every day. Let's now go back to our story about Sazakawa Global 2000 to do with agricultural inputs. Productivity and marketability in Uganda hangs in balance after farmers fail to utilize remedies that boost crop and animal production. Misuse of agricultural chemicals also threatens crop production targets and incomes that also affect the value chain. Uh, farmers just wake up, go to the garden, choose from some of the home saved seed. They do not add fertilizer to their gardens. And this one has happened for the last 40 or 50 years. And as such, for example, our soils are greatly depleted, lacking the, uh, lacking the major crop nutrients that are vital for growth. Access to quality inputs is one of the cardinal issues in the agricultural value chain. Uh, without uh, quality inputs, then there is a problem. Uh, to cover that, input dealers have to be trained so that they are able to render a quality service to the stakeholders, to the farmers. Agro input stockists, and we hope going through this will improve the way they do business uh, in terms of uh, accessing quality inputs, but also the way they can order inputs using the latest trend of technology like the applications. As a result, there are ailments associated with misuse of agricultural chemicals. You go to a store in the market, you find tomatoes which are with white color. You tell the fellow, my dear, and some of these colors, they are not on the, some of them they tell us that they, they say the, the color is on the surface. But some of these chemicals, they have the power, they are systemic. They have the power to enter into the tomatoes particularly in the flesh. You eat the flesh of the tomato, you're in trouble. You go to some of these markets, you find cabbages with smelling with a lot of the, the, these, these organophosphates and the water view. So there's a lot of there's, there's trouble in the country. Sasakawa Africa Association and Macquarie University have trained input traders on safe use of agro inputs to address quality input and proper agriculture information. We also noticed that there has been a challenge of access to uh, quality inputs. 
So Sasakawa, together with the Ministry of Agriculture and the Makerere University, have been supporting farmers by training them for a period of five days so that they are able to handle and also sell quality inputs uh, to the farmers. We, Makelele, majorly our duty is to <coughs> polish or to, to screen those to move out, to show their competence in disseminating the services. After the week's training, certificates of safe use were awarded as an assurance on improving quality. So I came to this participation to learn how to safely use pesticides and handle them. We need these skills in order to control and minimize the, the damaging pests that has actually disturbed the whole, the entire Uganda. It's one of my dreams. Oh, actually, I'm upcoming dealer in a, a, I'm a, an a upcoming dealer in pesticides. I'm Navka Farida and Setumba Douglas. In a move to address existing high internet costs in Africa, the Common Market for Eastern and Southern Africa, Comesa, is set to draft a regional policy on harmonization and regulatory framework to reduce costs of internet across member states. Delegates and country representatives from the common market from the eastern and southern Africa are set to draft a regional policy on harmonization and regulatory framework to reduce the costs of internet across member states. So we are introducing a concept of open access. Open access is where if you have a fiber, others can also use it. But at a competitive rate, where you should not come like you give them prices which uh, will take them out of the business, no. You give them prices which reflects the cost of uh, investment, the cost of operating the fiber. So that's a fiber optic open access framework, which we are, we are producing a model law. That model law is for it's a, a best practice for countries to adopt. The event, which was presided over by the Permanent Secretary, Minister of ICT and National Guidance, aimed at forging ways through which member states can maximize the use of SECOM broadband submarine cable system along the continent's eastern and southern coasts. However, the countries that are long landlocked to date face a lot of challenges in terms of very high internet costs because of the cost of transport, transportation of this, uh, you know, of this data of internet from the sea up to the, uh, our, uh, our countries or landlocked countries. So the discussion we are having today is geared towards, you know, discussing how best do we have policies in place that support us to improve this communication, but also bring down the cost of, you know, the cost of internet, the cost of communication, the cost of digital infrastructure. The representatives from the regional blocks are optimistic that should these resolutions be adopted, it will be a key milestone in promoting development of optical fiber infrastructure across the regions. In short, we expect that after the policies have been adopted, then they can be applied and the operators within the East African community countries can all share infrastructure to save on energy and also to reduce the cost of building. And also the infrastructure is also expensive. The implementation of the available optic fiber infrastructure across the region would improve cross-border trade free movement of people and reduce the cost of doing business across landlocked countries. Sada Mubale, UBC News, Kampala. Busitema University informs the general public and all its students who qualified for conferment of degrees and award of diplomas and certificates that the university will hold its 14th graduation ceremony on Thursday, 28th March 2024. The function will start at 8 a.m. at Busitema campus in Busia district. The provisional graduation list is available on the university website www.busitema.ac.ug. 
This graduation ceremony will be broadcast live on UBC TV starting at 10 a.m. March is the month of film magic as the Uganda Communications Commission brings you the regional film competition. Experience the excitement across Uganda. Northern region in Moroto from the 4th to the 8th of March. Eastern region in Jinja from the 11th to the 15th of March. Central region in Mitiana from the 18th to the 22nd of March. Western region in Kasese from the 24th to the 27th of March. Come and watch some of the best films made by your very own creative minds on their way to stardom. Follow and support the different nominees as they battle for top honors in each regional film competition. The winners will walk away with prestigious awards and exciting prizes. The regional film competition is powered by the Uganda Communications Commission, increasing diversity of Ugandan content. UBC News Tonight. The 2024 Pepsi University League continues tomorrow, that is Saturday, Tuesday, with Kampala University hosting Kumba in the semi-finals. Kampala University has been reinstated after winning a petition against St. Lawrence University that used non-bona fide players in the quarter-final that it won 5-2. So I know how to handle such big games and I know what it takes to look at my side, the players are moving. They are very good players and young and so talented and I'm so happy. And besides that, we have very, very good coaches. Kampala University is ready for action against a team that they have beaten on two occasions in the final. We are here. We are trying to work together with the players to see that uh, they can get the best results. It is not easy because we have... Uh, um, um, we have uh, situations that are ongoing at campus because, uh, as you know, the semester is almost closing. So some students, uh, they have busy schedules. For Nkumba University, this game provides a chance to enter a third ever final. And according to players and coach, they are ready. Uh, the team is prepared, uh, if we can say. And uh, the preparation is in that uh, we know the stage that we have reached, uh, the semi-final. We have also not been here for quite uh, some time. And uh, so the boys are, are training hard. We are, we are motivated, uh, we are prepared very well. Uh, we have had a couple of games, uh, we have had some good training sessions ahead of the game. Uh, I think we are good to go. The other semi final between Uganda Christian University and McKellen University Business School is won all after the first leg, with UCU at home in the second. The OMAX Omeda meeting concluded at Serere SS in Serere District with athletes engaging in a variety of athletics events. Uh, this annual event is held in remembrance of the late OMAX Omeda who sadly passed on in 2019. I beg your pardon. SS for being extremely smart and organized. God bless you. I want Among the attendees were family members, friends, Serere district officials, and representatives from Uganda Athletics Federation. The Serere woman member of parliament, Helena Doa, who is also the state minister of officials, honored the event as chief guest and partook of the 100 meter race. <laughs> Adoa urged athletes to aspire to lead purposeful lives, drawing inspiration from the impactful legacy of Omeda, who profoundly influenced other numerous athletes in Zrede. To me, when you are good to other people when you are alive, your name will not disappear. What Papa used to do in athletics, raising different children, especially those that needed his support, some of the children were, uh, were good at athletics, but they were very poor. Papa paid their fees. During his tenure, Omeda played a pivotal role in establishing the Serere Athletics Association. Additionally, he served as the delegate for Serere within the Uganda Athletics Federation. The event attracted athletes from both school and elite levels who participated in various track and field events. Uh, he used to support schools here. 
bring coaches to train athletes. He actually started a, 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 an athletics club called Iserere, which are actually still on. Now in its third edition, the late Omax Omeda meeting continues to honor the legacy of the late and celebrate his contributions to athletics development. The event serves a dual purpose to commemorate Omeda's achievements and to identify talent within the district athletics community. We sincerely appreciate uh, the Athletics Federation of Uganda for always remembering Daddy when this day comes. That brings us to the end of all we had for you at this particular moment. We'll catch you at 10 p.m. with another arrangement. My name is Michael Jordan Lukomwa with Elizabeth Nakakon and the whole team. We'll, let's catch you then. We'll leave you with the weather uh, forecast here. Latest weather forecast from the Weather Center. My name is Juliet Nanteza. Most parts of the country had light showers in the morning, though some had sunny intervals. When we take a look at the satellite imagery today, it shows that the rain belt has shifted to the central of Africa, our country inclusive, and this means we are going to be receiving rains in various areas. As we prepare for your Tuesday in the morning, we expect central to wake up with light showers in most areas. Eastern, we expect to wake up with sunny intervals in most areas. The western stretch, we expect to wake up with isolated showers in most areas. And in north, we expect sunny intervals to dominate most areas. Later on in the afternoon, temperatures are expected to rise to 28 in central to 29 with isolated showers. Eastern, we expect a maximum of 30 to 33 with light showers. The western stretch, we expect Kasese to have a maximum of 30, Masindi a maximum of 28, and Kabale Highlands, we expect a maximum of 24 with isolated showers in most areas. In the north, we expect a maximum of 33 in most areas with light showers. Elsewhere, Nairobi, we expect a maximum of 27 with thunder showers. Dubai, we expect a maximum of 27 with rain. Cairo, we expect a maximum of 27 with sunny intervals. And London, we expect a maximum of 11. That's all we had for you from Uganda National Meteorological Authority. Stay tuned and stay blessed. UBC, inspiring Uganda.